In today's video, we are going to talk about my five recipes and my five tricks for brewing on the AeroPress. Now, if anyone has brewed on the AeroPress, you know that this is a really fun device to use. Maybe you have the regular AeroPress or maybe you have yourself a travel AeroPress. I personally had one of these, I had one of the originals before the travel was out and carried it all throughout China. I probably made 10,000 coffees on that thing, so much that the plastic wore out. It was years and years and years. Well, that is my goal, to create a fun, easy, tasty coffee every single time, and I'm gonna show you how. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like this video and others, subscribe, and do share your comments, because I read them all and love to engage with you as you're learning how to brew on the AeroPress. So first off, what is the AeroPress? The AeroPress is a cool little device. It uses all the basics of coffee brewing technology to give us a really fantastic cup of coffee. So here we have the two basic pieces. We have the uh, brewing chamber and the plunger. Now the plunger fits into the brewing chamber so that we can push our water and coffee out into the cup. That's what we need to do. Now there is an inverted method of brewing and a regular method of brewing. We're going to cover both of those in this video. Also you get paper filters and the filter lid so that you can hold the filters in place. No, this is not an advertisement to sell AeroPress. I bought mine on Amazon. Go and get yours, they're everywhere. And they're great, you'll love them. See, everything fits together nicely if you reassemble it. And you also have a funnel so that if your cup has a small top or if for some reason you're brewing into a kettle, you can receive the coffee in it. And again, you can stack this however you want and put everything all together. So that's the AeroPress. Now the AeroPress is going to do what we need all coffee brewers to do. It's going to allow water and coffee to work together. When water and coffee work together, then the coffee dissolves and we get a cup of coffee. So looking at the recipes after the tricks, here's how it works. Put this back in my handy dandy holder. We are going to brew five recipes. We're gonna brew a fine ground recipe. There we go, fine ground coffee. That would be like if you buy a bag of coffee or if you get it ground for espresso style. Or so, we're going to brew a medium ground coffee. So standard drip, filter, basket brew. And then we're gonna grind and brew coarse AeroPress recipe. We'll do a double iced recipe and I'm going to teach you a Christmas blend. So first, the tips and tricks, or we can call them the rules. There are five rules that I'm going to use today. Let me hit my water just to get a fresh boil. Rule number one, again, we wanna keep this fun, easy, and tasty. So how do we do that? We need, we need to get rid of the thermometers, get rid of the scales, all of that stuff is fun. I use scales and thermometers all the time, but I also have enough experience to know that if you use water fresh off the boil, 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be easy. It's going to work. The AeroPress is going to let you do that. So permission granted, take water straight off the boil and brew it in your AeroPress. Rule number two, just use your scoop. The scoop is perfect depending on if you are light, medium, or dark roast. This is going to be anywhere from 11 and a half to 12, 12 and a half, maybe 13 grams of coffee. So you're right around that 12 grams of coffee, which is perfect. Just use the scoop. Just use a level scoop, use a heaping scoop. It doesn't matter as long as your coffee tastes good. Permission granted. So rule number one, keep it easy, keep it repeatable. Use water fresh off the boil and use your scoop. Tricks and rules B and C go together. So again, if you've looked at various videos, you'll see there is a upright brewing method. 
This is where we take our filter holder and we take a coffee filter. In our filter holder, we place the coffee filter and screw it onto the brewing chamber. Put that on your coffee mug or your mason jar, whatever you happen to have. And I'm going to use the medium ground coffee for this recipe. So, as I said, one scoop of coffee, put it in there. The upright brewing method means just that. We're leaving the brewing chamber upright. Now, this is going to have kind of a flow through gravity, just like you would a drip coffee filter, letting the coffee bloom. Well, what does that mean? If the coffee is really fresh and we put water onto it, the carbon dioxide that is locked up inside, the CO2 wants to come out. It needs to come out. The other thing that it does is it allows the water to soak into the coffee and that will make it so that it can dissolve properly. If we just dump a bunch of water through, the water actually flows past the hard coffee grounds and it's not going to dissolve. But on this recipe, we're going to use number two, the medium 80. So let's use 80 seconds to brew this and see what the results are like. Okay, I've got my stopwatch. You can use your phone, you can use whatever you want. Here, I'm gonna hit start, and then I'm going to pour just enough water to get that coffee wet, and I'm going to wait 25% of the time. So on an 80 second brew, that will be 20 seconds. Let's go. All right. And it's okay to kind of move this around just a little bit, because I wanna make sure all those coffee grounds are wet. Perfect. You can see it's just kind of at that first line. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I'm just going to gently fill all of this. Again, I want all of that coffee to be wet. Now, if anyone was a Nintendo fan, we are going to do an up, up, down, down, left, right, B, A, start. Okay, so where are we at? 46 seconds. Now the coffee is just brewing and you can see it's dripping. So again, we have kind of this hybrid. Partially right now it's immersed in the coffee, but it's dripping through. There is a filter on the bottom and we're going to use a plunger, which means that we are using some pressure. We're using some force to push this coffee through. So 80 seconds is one minute and 40 seconds. One minute and 20 seconds, 60 plus 20 is 80. And here we go, 120. So I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to press the rest of it through. So the total time that I let the coffee and water be together before I started plunging was 80 seconds. Again, there's lots of ways to add time, subtract time, choosing your brewing method. I'm just gonna keep it simple for you. 40, 40, 80, 20. Okay. So now we have a nice cup of coffee. That's a perfect cup of coffee. This is a large mason jar. And we can clean up our AeroPress. We can plunge, pop that into the trash can. Good, this is a medium roast Sumatra. Really nice, easy to extract. We just used the upright with a 25% time in the bloom. That was 20 seconds of our 80 seconds for our medium coffee brewing method. Let's move on to the next. Now let's look at the fine 40 recipe. So if you have coffee and you wanna brew faster, you just like the taste of fine ground coffee and you need a recipe for your AeroPress, then here it is. So take your fine ground coffee and plan for a 40 second, that's gonna be a really quick brew. We are going to use the inverted method. So we're moving a little fast with the inverted method when we only have 40 seconds, but you can do it. It's gonna to be totally fine. The other thing we're going to add in here is I'm going to show you the 
uh, trick with the filter to keep it in even when we're moving the filter around. So when you wet the filter, it's going to stay in place and we are brewing this time in an immersion hybrid. The former was a gravity hybrid. This is an immersion hybrid and I'm going to show you why. So take your AeroPress and actually start with it upside down. You're going to put the plunger in or start right side up if you want to your cup. So let's say you were going to start right side up. This is how we want to finish, but we're going to turn it upside down. This is the inverted approach. So for safety, make sure that your plunger head, the black part, is fully inside of the plunger. I like to put it just right to this black line right here, and then I add my coffee, add my water. Okay, so I'm gonna prepare everything first before I really get into it. Now, take your filter cap and your paper filter and just go ahead and set it on the inside there. I'm gonna pour a little bit of water into this filter and then as that filter is wet, here's what's cool about it. I can make sure that it's all stuck to the bottom. I can flip it upside down. All right, my filter is ready to go. And I'm going to take one scoop of coffee. Keep it easy. Now we don't have to pre-wet the coffee in this scenario. The reason is it's an immersion brew. The coffee is not tempted, the water is not tempted to flow through and disappear. It's all going to be enclosed inside. So the goal, again, I have it here. I'm going to fill it up just right to this line. So I started with the plunger right here, fully beneath the black line, the plunger line. And then I'm just gonna fill it up to here. I want a little space up top so that I'm not spilling and creating a mess. All right, and we're going 40 seconds, that's it. I'm just gonna add the water, and then I'm going to do my stir. Here we go. And I pour the water quickly because it just helps me in the process. Take my stirrer, round, left, right, up, down, tap it off, done. Now I'm going to put the filter lid on the cap and then I'm just going to press this slowly. You can see that the air, there's just half an inch of air. I'm going to press it and then it'll stop making a hissing sound and just turn it over. So look at that. Here I am, 43 seconds, perfect. Let's press it. Get it into the camera view. Now when I plunge, I like to do both hands. This, is, this table is a little high, but when you use two hands, it just keeps the pressure off of your shoulders, off of your elbows, and you just do a gentle, full press. I press my AeroPress all the way through. I'm not afraid. Some people try to get you to stop early and then you don't know when it is. Okay, so there we have our full cup of coffee. The reason I press all the way through to the bottom is that now there's no air in here. It's just the plunger and the coffee puck. The reason that's important is that when I pull this off, the, plunge, the filter is right there. And listen to this, it makes it nice and easy to clean up like that. Look how clean that is, just pops right off. You've got your puck of coffee with your filter that can go into your garbage, your landfill, whatever you want to do. Landfill, your compost pile. That's what I wanted to say. All right, so here is our fine ground 40 seconds. This is the same coffee as the first one. Because it's fine ground, it has a little bit uh, I mean, just a little more like that espresso flavor. And espresso is just that concentration. And so this one feels a little more concentrated than the first. But I'll tell you a secret why that is also. I'll show you the secret. Look at the amount of water in both of these. So you can see the amount of water. This one was our first flow through. 
uh, gravity and that filter allows it to drip. Whereas this one right here, the espresso, when it's inverted, I can accurately control the amount of water that flows through. So if you want a consistent, super consistent brew every time, you're always going to have the same amount of water come out here. If I added a pinch of water in this just to bring it up to the same line as this one right here, they would be the same body, the same feeling in coffee. This one is just a little lighter, a little cleaner. My dad would prefer this cup of coffee. I'll take this one. Are you ready to brew an iced coffee? Let's do the double iced recipe. So using everything that you've already learned from the fine 40, medium 80, coarse 120, we've got our rules A, B, C, D, E. Let's go ahead and do an inverted. Because when you make an iced coffee, you don't wanna use that much hot water. So take our brewer and we're gonna plan for an inverted brewing approach. Now, what do these numbers, one, two, three, four, what do those mean? You can think of the gaps, one, gap two, gap three, gap four. So let's go ahead and fill up to this first gap. I'm gonna push the plunger all the way up to the center of four. Now, I'm going to add two scoops. That's why I call it double iced. I'm gonna add two scoops of coffee, and for this one, I'm gonna use the fine ground. I want the coffee nice and strong. You know, maybe I wanna add something to it, Just a little oat milk or maybe I just want the ice and for it to be concentrated. So I've got this right here. Now, if you look at that, I've already got, man, I've got a lot of coffee. That two scoops filled it right up there. So now I'm going to add water just to that extra one. So I'm only using half of that chamber from the four to the one. I've already eliminated this. I'm not gonna use the top. <clears throat> So double ice, we're making it double concentrated. We've got the water fresh off the boil. And then, I don't know, for aesthetics or something, I like to brew straight into my icy cup. It's really pretty when you watch this. Brewing into ice. You've got some gaps in there, but go ahead and fill your cup 75% of the way. Okay, so my ice is ready, my coffee's ready. Don't forget to get my filter ready because I'm only gonna use my 40 seconds again. This is my fine 40. Your brew time should correlate with your grind. There's a tip, there's a trick. Brew time needs to correlate with the grind settings. So, the fine, is the finest, smallest ground. There's more surface area to dissolve. It needs the least amount of time. The course is larger chunks of coffee. That means in total, there's less surface area. So I need triple the time. All right, let's go add our water. Again, we're just gonna go, we started at the four, added two scoops of coffee going to take us up to the one. Now I really want to stir this well because I've got a lot of coffee and not too much water. So I'm just kind of digging with the bottom corners of my stirring here. Down around those edges to make sure that everything was receiving water. There were no dry spots. Now when I do the inverted, I am removing this just like I pre-wet that filter so that I can flip it upside down. If I remove all the air from this chamber, when I flip it upside down, watch what happens. Nothing comes out because there's a vacuum inside. So the inverted can be a very safe way to brew your coffee as long as you pre-wet that filter so that it's sticking in place and you remove the air from the brewing chamber. Now, let's plunge it out. I may have had a little bit more than 40 seconds because I was doing some teaching there. Now, it's quite hard to plunge because I have 
a fine ground coffee, which just creates a little more resistance. And there were two scoops. There's also not that much water in there, so I'm done. All right. Great. We'll have a look at that puck when we're done there. Look at this beautiful iced coffee. Now you see how that melted down? You take some of your favorite creamer, splash of that in there, your Oatly, just fill up this next half, put a, put a straw in it, and this is a beautiful summer drink. You will amaze your boyfriend or girlfriend or your guest, your company when they come over. It's super strong right now. So cut it with water, cut it with oat milk, share it with a friend. Your double iced coffee on the AeroPress is ready to go. Cheers. A brand new recipe, the Christmas coffee. So if you are in the need for something spicy, something aromatic, something that warms you, you know, this is warming in multiple ways, then I want to teach you how to brew a beautiful Christmas coffee. And it's going to be fun, easy, and of course super tasty because we're using the AeroPress. I got my water fresh boiled. I'm going to use a medium ground coffee for this one. So just really easy to find. You can get medium ground coffee anywhere and we're gonna brew it upright. So upright method, let's get our brewing chamber and a filter. Put the filter in, screw it into place, scoop. One scoop of coffee. Now, if you ever wanna do a double, let's say you wanna do two cups of coffee. I wanna brew one of these for me and one of these for my wife, for my friend. Okay, let's go ahead and do two. Here we go. Plan change, midway, it's cool. Now, normally, Secret ingredient. To make this Christmas coffee really pop, I'm gonna add that aromatic, beautiful holiday spice everyone loves, cinnamon. There are other spices you can use. I've tried some of them. They come out a little stronger or more harsh. Cinnamon just goes really well with coffee. So, now I would add uh, just maybe one, two, two or three shakes for a single coffee. So I'm just gonna go ahead with five here. We'll go from two and a half and scale up double five. So here, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. I've just got a nice coating of cinnamon on top there. Now it's buried under the coffee because I moved it. It's important to put the cinnamon into the coffee before you brew it. The reason is if you just try to put this straight into your coffee, it's so dry, it's so powdery, it really doesn't dissolve and it'll be chunky if you put it into coffee that's already been brewed. So sneak your cinnamon in before the brew, it gets caught up in the filter in the grounds. Started my timer, here we go. Now we're gonna pre-wet this just so that all of the coffee and the cinnamon is submerged in water. And I'm going to wait 20 seconds. Now, if you wanna go ahead, you can start stirring now. So you can just kind of help that bloom a little bit. Now I'm not gonna do a full stir just yet. You can pull this out and hold it with one hand. You can also just leave it right in there. See that? Okay, so now I'm going to do my up, down, up, down, Left, two circles, right, two circles. I can really smell that cinnamon, it smells good. If I wanted it strong, I could just leave it with that first amount of water. I like to go ahead, especially if I'm doing a double like this, and just keep my brewer full. Okay, so we're at one, minute, 10 seconds. After 10 seconds here, I'm going to go ahead and plunge it all the way through. 
like I said, you can see with gravity, this has already brewed quite a bit of coffee. It's flowing through there. We can top it off at the end with our hot water. Time to plunge. Now the interesting thing about cinnamon is it's very aromatic. Flavor, yes, but mostly aroma. It's a very strong aroma. It adds a mouth feel, kind of a warmthness, that spicy note that we talk about. It's a very warming spice. The cool thing about cinnamon too, cinnamon is great when you're having sugar, desserts. Cinnamon actually helps the body break down sugar. So having a little extra cinnamon during the holiday seasons when we're having extra cookies and extra sweets is a great thing to have. It also adds a little bit of bitterness to the coffee. You know, just brewing cinnamon, it is a little bit bitter. So here's the trick with cinnamon. Cinnamon loves sugar. Don't be afraid to add sugar or use milk Milk has lactose, which has nice sugars. So I'm just gonna do one and two. Sugar actually accentuates the cinnamon. If you've had uh, some of the Turkish coffee or various recipes, they may add cinnamon, cardamom, spices, and they add lots of sugar. Sugar and spices just bring one another up. They complement and exemplify what the other is doing. So now, I just feel like I taste the cinnamon more when there's sugar inside and present. Now what's really good, like I said, add a little milk, add a little cream, because it just softens and rounds out the whole cinnamon brewing experience that you have going on. It takes that spice and just makes it really soft and warm. Here is your holiday drink recipe. This is a cinnamon spice oat milk coffee however you want to design it enjoy and happy holidays i've had fun brewing on the aeropress with my caddy with my different grind sizes fine 40 medium 80 coarse 120. if you want to experiment if it's summertime go with the double iced you can throw in some honey you can shake it add some lemon zest whatever you want if it's christmas or holiday season anytime have yourself a cup of Christmas brew. Keep it fun, keep it easy, keep it tasty. The AeroPress is so fun, it's so easy, it's so tasty. Don't overcomplicate it. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you wanna learn more about this cool brew caddy, check it out down below. If you like this video and you wanna share it with your friends, share, tag, ask me any questions. If you have trouble, ask me how to brew. And check out my courses at howtocoffeepro.com. Have a great day. Happy holidays. I'll see you next year. Mmm, that's really good.